Well, it's, it's, it's interesting to see what people, other people do with their lives. And um, there's a catalog resume being done on Jack Bush now. And Jack kept diaries from 1952 mm -hmm. to the, he wrote in his diary the last day of his life. Uh, he did wrote every day. And who was Jack Bush? Jack Bush is a Canadian painter who passed away 33 years ago. And uh, I, was, I was in New York and, and uh, a friend from Boston came up to me and said, you're not doing a good job taking care of Jack Bush. I said, I didn't know that was my job. And he said, well, it is, David. You know, you, it's 33 years. There's no catalog resume. This was actually about two years ago he said this to me. And I said, you can't have a catalog resume without identifying a scholar. And he said, well, uh, you, you go about it and I'm going to give you some money and you're going to match me and we're going to get this started. So I said, okay, I'll try. And I found uh, uh, a young lady who was a graduate uh, student at U of T who had done a doctoral thesis that fit perfectly in terms of doing this history. Uh, but what's interesting is how rich and interesting this actual document will end up being because Jack, in his own words, talks about his working processes and about what he's thinking about and, and, and really says a lot about his art. And uh, I, I was uh, speaking to the young lady who now started actually this, just this past July 1st. And, uh, and I said uh, to myself, I wonder if she's going to keep a diary of the process and a diary of what goes on. Because I always was against keeping diaries. I never kept any records of anything I did. Um, I kept correspondence and I kept, you know, I'm a bit of a pack rat, but I never kept a daily diary. And uh, I always sort of thought it would sort of maybe drag me down, make me stay in the past too much. Uh, and you're always trying to look to the future and to build. And. Uh, and then I realized how valuable it was when, when Jack was gone and we, we wanted to do something to honor him and we wanted to understand more and we wanted to have full records of where his paintings were, that he actually was there by our side helping us and guiding us because he had written these 24 volumes by hand this thick from 52 to 77. 24 volumes? Yes. A lifetime is a lot of writing. and. Even if you do short entries, and his book in the book is it now out? No, it's not out as a book. What, in the next two years, there the, the the project is aimed to end by October two thousand and fourteen, to find where all his paintings are, and to record what has happened since they left the studio, where they've been exhibited, and where we have possible information information about each of the pictures in a scholarly and objective a way as possible. Uh, and it'll probably be three volumes and there'll be several essays and each picture needs to be found and illustrated and photographed. And the and where reason... Did he live? It, where did Jack live? He, he lived here in Toronto and uh, he was one of the founding members of Painters 11, which was the first group of abstract painters in English Canada. But he really flourishes in the second half of his career, which begins about the, at, the, at the end of Painters 11, which is 1960. So his career really dev devolves into three parts. That part before 53, and then Painters 11 from 53 to 60, and then 60 to the end of his life uh, in 77. Was he a member of the Arts and Letters Club? He, I, I believe at some point in his life he may have been, uh, probably in the early part of it. Uh, he certainly was a, a, a member of the Royal Academy of Canadian Painters, he, of the Society of Painters in Watercolor, and, and he was an officer in most of them. And amongst Painters 11, he was actually the secretary who documented and kept the minutes for Painters 11.